Okay, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Max if you're new around here and I make videos on all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and I have just come back from one of the best experiences of my life. So I've been in Bali, as you know. I think I left you last time. I just got into my accommodation, ready to start my Qigong retreat. And yeah, it was a beautiful room I had. The place, the setting was just perfect. It was like out of a fantasy movie or something, honestly. And so yeah, let me tell you about it. It was a three week Qigong course to become teacher certified. So woo, I'm a Qigong teacher now. <laughs> and yeah, it was just the most amazing experience ever. It surpassed all my levels of expectation. I thought we would just be going, you know, to like learn a few Qigong moves and just to like practice teaching in front of a class. <laughs> my God, was it so much more than that. The Qigong brought up a lot of stuff. We did some really intense like healing work and letting go. Some of it you wouldn't even believe me, like it sounds like I'm crazy. <laughs> Which we all know I am a bit crazy by now, but I'm talking about people like flying across the room and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, my teacher was probably like the closest thing to a Jedi master that we have on earth. He's been practicing Qigong for 30 years and he trained with monks. Believe me when I say he could just do that and you could fall down to the ground like it was that powerful <laughs> he didn't even need to touch you because obviously he's just like projecting chi out with his intention as well so i trained with uh, forest rock qigong and i do really really recommend this even if you don't want to become a teacher there was loads of people on the course with me who didn't want to become teachers and they were just there for the experience you know so yeah basically every day we would start at 7 a.m We'd do like a nice morning practice for an hour and a half and then go down to breakfast. And then we'd do like learn some traditional Chinese medicine theory. And then we'd have uh, lunch. And we'd do another practice after lunch or, you know, we did loads of cool stuff. Also, I just want to say sorry for the lack of footage. Uh, phones were not allowed in the Shala and I was not thinking about making a YouTube video. So a lot of my uh, clips are in vertical. Yeah, it was a really good digital detox, like, needed. <laughs> and just look how stunning this place is, guys. This was the beautiful grounds, and this was the Shala. The Shala is like the studio where you practice, and it is beautiful. So this is where we spent the majority of our time, and it's also where we did our meditations, and our teacher's wife was a beautiful musician. She had an amazing voice and would perform these incredible sound healing journeys for us up here as well, which was really beautiful. Especially as the sun was setting and all the insects came to life and were dancing around and oh, it was just magnificent. And yeah, the energy of everyone in the room performing the same Qigong moves was just something special. <laughs> we would get long breaks as well so we could enjoy swimming in the pool and having some relaxing downtime too, which was nice. <laughs> We had a lot of fun during our breaks. <laughs> I had a nice gecko flatmate with me for the duration of the course. Here was the on-site chicken. <laughs> so yeah, we also had three excursions. There was a wood excursion where we went into the forest and we like prayed with the monks, uh, meditated in the forest, we did some tree hugging. And just walking around this beautiful forest, there was like an ancient banyan tree that was the most enormous tree I've ever seen. And so many beautiful monkeys running around. <laughs> the nice kind this time. These were nice monkeys. And then we did a water excursion where we went to this beautiful water temple. And we got like baptized in the water by a monk. <laughs> Insane waterfalls. And <laughs> I was not expecting this. As I was walking up to the first waterfall, I just heard this almighty scream. We were told to go under the waterfall and to just scream, like, as loud as we can. And just let all that, you know, built up stress and trauma, just release it. <laughs> and it felt so good, honestly. When it was my turn, I'd never screamed before. I did not know how I was going to sound. It was so cathartic. And it was such a relief. And yeah, we probably looked like absolute nut jobs <laughs> and then the last excursion was a fire excursion where we went really high into the mountains of bali and up a volcano where there was a lovely uh, fire temple and you know we had a walk through the forest and the crater lake there which was nice 
and we collected some things to burn into the fire at the fire ceremony that we held that night. <laughs> it was so good. So yeah, there was 33 of us on the course, all the most beautiful souls you can imagine. I made so many friends during this, which is so nice because everyone was from all parts of the world. Yeah, it was just bliss, waking up every day, walking down to the Shala, <laughs> this beautiful environment. I love being in Bali. I'd never gotten up so early in my life and I found that routine really good actually. So I'm still getting up at half six now. <laughs> the only thing you have on your mind for the day is just Qigong and that's it. It's so wonderful. And yeah, we learned so much uh, theory as well. Like, <laughs> check this out. <laughs> yeah, we got a huge training manual full of everything, you know, like all the meridians, the extraordinary vessels, uh, healing foods, yin and yang, five elements. And then of course we have all the Qigong moves, which we learned. We learned three systems. We did Shibashi, five element and heaven to earth. And so yeah, they're all in here as well. And it tells you like the TCM aspect for each move, you know, so like if it's good for the liver or the kidneys or the bladder meridian, for example. And then we also have the Western function for each move as well. You know, so that might be, you know, good for relieving hypertension or low blood pressure or lower back pain. Each move is so different. Some might be good for free coursing the liver chi and some might be good for heart palpitations, you know, so it all works really interconnectedly though, especially when you do a full set. <laughs> Here we are performing a move called wave hands over a lake, over a lake, <laughs> which I thought was funny. So we're in a place called Jianya, which was really close to Ubud, and Ubud was my kind of place. <laughs> there was just vegan restaurants everywhere. There must have been like at least 50 vegan restaurants, all in a really close area. And so cheap, the food was so cheap. You could get a restaurant meal for like two pounds. <laughs> it's insane. I was kind of in heaven and I want to go back. And we also had a couple of days off during the three weeks where we'd go into Uber. Um, we'd often just do things like go to the gym, uh, ice baths, get a massage, uh, walk around and eat a lot of good food. <laughs> Yeah, this one was called Zest, which had amazing smoothie bowls. Yeah, and the views at some of these restaurants were crazy. And the food was so good, oh my god. <laughs> I could just go on and on about the food, but look how good this smoothie bowl looks. I mean, oh my god. There was also an alchemy restaurant in Ubud, and if you watched my last video, you know I love alchemy, and this one was just as good. But yeah, the gyms were so fun there, you know, they had like climbing walls, ice baths, uh, spas, rope climbs, just really fun, like that you don't get in the UK. And of course I enjoyed plenty of matcha. My favourite was at a place called Mudra. Oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we just had some really nice meals as like a group as well, it was so nice. And I really enjoyed all the live music that a lot of the restaurants put on. It felt so lively and it just felt such a nice way of living. But it's just this amazing metropolis of like yoga places, <laughs> vegan food places, massage places. I was getting so many massages. <laughs> for five pounds, literally five pounds. I got an hour and a half one for seven pound fifty. And they're like an amazing Balinese massage as well. Better than you'd get for here, then you'd pay like 80 pounds. Yeah, Qigong is an ancient Chinese practice, by the way, and it translates as working with vital energy. I like to think of it as clearing out any stagnant and stale qi out of your body and bringing in clean, vibrant qi and just circulating that good energy around the body. You can just feel the energy like coming out of your palms and out of your feet the more you practice. After those three weeks, I could feel so much chi, like so much stronger than I ever did before. And I'd been practicing online for a good couple of years before doing this course as well. And that's why I just love to do Qigong every day. You can really feel the energy so much more than doing a practice like yoga, which I don't really resonate with that much, but I just resonate with Qigong so much and I love feeling 
and then Qigong is in my body. It's just mm, amazing. And in the Qigong system, uh, Heaven to Earth, where you're holding like the poses for a really long time, um, that actually releases like opioids from the brain to travel to the parts of the body um, so that it will relax so that you can keep it held for a long time. <laughs> and that feels so good when those opioids get released. <laughs> That actually feels so, so good though. And God, you like see things. It felt like breaking through the matrix, like looking out into the distance. My vision was just like, well, it's hard to explain, but you know, you, I felt like I could just see through everything, if that makes sense. I could see like all the particles. The, God, the first time I did it, it hit me hard. <laughs> I was on a different planet and it took a lot to bring myself, like to ground myself again. And then the next time I actually felt a lot of joy doing the exercise. But it was good because I need, really needed to like go through that the first time. Yeah, I mean, a lot of us find this practice because we've gone through some shit in our lives. So, I mean, it's a really good healing practice. And it keeps you young as well. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> they say, why do old people do Qigong? When it's like, well, no, they're old because they're doing Qigong. I mean, there is a system called Long Life Qigong as well, and the moves are just so gentle, you know, and and then that was just the most amazing experience ever. And at the end of the three weeks, we had a beautiful closing ceremony, and it was really sad to say goodbye. <laughs> we made such strong connections during those three weeks. And of course, when I came back to the UK, it was like <laughs> miserable. We had such good weather out there. I felt quite sad when I came back. I missed it so much. and <laughs> I'm kind of like back into my rhythm of things now. And my way of life is so much better, actually having completed that course. So now I believe that literally anything is possible and I can do anything. And this world is magic and malleable. We can do anything. My manifestation has been on point recently little qigong tip <laughs> if you want uh like more energy quickly the kidneys are actually like the battery of the body so just slightly tap the backs of the kidneys there which is good if you want some quick energy <laughs> one of the like warm-ups that we always do uh, is called knocking on heaven's door and it's really nice one when you've like woken up and you want to like stretch the body and stuff yeah just around the waist and tapping the back of the kidney there then you can come up to like the lungs and the chest and the back of the shoulders as well where we store a lot of tension so yeah sadly the course did come to an end but i wasn't finished yet because my sister was flying over to bali and we were going to have a week in lombok together lombok is the neighboring island to bali and it is like a paradise island <laughs> uh, because it doesn't have an international airport it is like so much more quieter so you can basically just fly there or get the ferry from bali and it's so quiet. I don't understand because it's like paradise. The beaches are so much better than Bali. Like the most pristine, huge, beautiful sand beaches. And the water is so hot. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we went surfing and swimming in the sea every day. It was just bliss. And yeah, the roads are so much quieter over there. Like <laughs> I was telling you, we rented a, uh, what do they call it? A scooter. Yeah. Oh my god, that was my first time riding a scooter. The first time I'd driven in seven years, actually. And it was riding, like, a motorbike. <laughs> well, that first time was tough. I did almost crash us straight into a truck. Because I had my sister on the back, and it just has a mind of its own sometimes, riding that motorbike. So I did almost kill us, but my good was still alive. I know I'd be protected anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, it just felt so good to ride a scooter around these islands, man. It's so fun and so freeing. I want to do it again. I want to go back again. I'm already plotting my return. <laughs> so in Lombok, we went to three main beaches. Tampa was my favourite, but it was just the most beautiful, pristine beach you could ever dream of. It was like a dream. There were a couple of rarangs on the beach as well, if you wanted food. But it was just so empty. It was like you had the whole beach to yourself, which I loved. The next was Tajang An Beach, and this one was not as nice as the other two that we visited, but it was still nice to swim. It was 
right next to Mares Hill, which is a viewpoint, and it had the most stunning scenery of the sunset. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful place to watch the sunset and contemplate life. <laughs> yeah, this landscape was really, really stunning. And probably the most iconic beach on Lombok is Salong Balanak. And it's not hard to see why. It is like breathtaking scenery. And this beach is huge. I went for a run along the beach and it just goes on and on and on. And it is quite busy, this one. There are a lot of people trying to sell you on like surfing lessons. And me and my sister did go surfing here and it was really fun and I do recommend. And yeah, we just had a nice relax, a nice catch up. Um, I do need to go back because I need to climb Mount Rinjani. <laughs> my, my sister was recovering from a cold, so we kind of just took it easy and chilled this time. I showed her some Qigong. And I absolutely love Lombok. I think it is one of my favourite places in the world. <laughs> or at least one of my favourite places that I have visited. And there's so much more of the island to explore. Uh, we stayed down south in a place called Kuta. And yeah, it's really nice, actually. It's kind of like a mini Ubud. Really upcoming i see and there's just amazing gyms oh yeah the gyms and the spas and everything's just so good and we've played a lot of that uh, paddle as well <laughs> which is that new sport which is like tennis and squash and that is so yeah, fun it's nice. better than tennis now this is something you would not get in the uk <laughs> this rope climb was so fun and it was definitely very sketchy I remember being super tired when I got to the top <laughs> and then you can't even slide down and if you fall there's nothing gonna stop you it was just like the hard ground at the bottom then it is time to return to reality but yeah I'm doing good guys I'm feeling good and this was yeah like I say one of the most magical months of my life <laughs> and yeah so that's the end of this video guys I just hope you try out Qigong for yourself oh I'll show you a move as well okay peace no, I shouldn't really be wearing a shirt to do this. I should be wearing loose clothing, so let's take this off. Oh, what an excuse to take the shirt off. <laughs> so this is the heart exercise from the five elements. So obviously it's going to be really good at <laughs> tonifying the heart and the heart channels. Okay, so you can just watch me do it the first time. <laughs> and this exercise is really good for promoting blood and chi circulation and it aids in housing our Shen, which is our spirit. And it is also good for insomnia and shortness of breath. Okay, so we're breathing in as we bring the hands up and we're breathing out as we push that hand out in front of the chest in as we turn our hips back towards the center and we're breathing out as that top hand comes down the opposite arm dredging the heart channels beautiful i could go into more detail on this maybe in a future video where i show you some more qigong moves and we do a full set <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video guys it means a lot to me and i hope you enjoyed it and learned something new which i'm sure you all did <laughs> Qigong is still such a underrated health modality and healing practice and I just hope that it gains more popularity because it has helped me massively and I hope that you try out Qigong for yourself. Peace! <laughs> Hello baby! My, my <laughs> Yeah, I was freaking hindering me for a long time, so.